Here's your belt. There's a terrible heap of silver in it. You better count it to see it's out there. Thank you. But I'm sure there's no need. By the way, could you tell me, has anyone been inquiring after me? Aye, there was a man in a motor car. He speared what I'd taken my place that day, and I let on I thought him daft. But he keep it on at me, and saying I said he mun be thinking of my good brother for the cliff that whiles leaned me a horn. He was a worse looking soul, and I couldn't understand the half of his English tongue. Here's your belt. There's a terrible heap of silver in it. You better count it to see it's out there. Thank you. But I'm sure there's no need. By the way, could you tell me? Has anyone been inquiring after me? Aye, there was a man in a motor car. He speared what I'd taken my place that day, and I let on I thought him daft. But he keep it on at me, and saying I said he mun be thinking of my good brother for the cliff that whiles lean me a horn. He was a worse looking soul, and I couldn't understand the half of his English tongue.
clear, isn't it? I back our Kennet any day against the test. Look at that big fellow. Four pounds if it's an ounce. But the evening rise is over and you can't tempt him. I don't see him. Look, there. A yard from the reeds, just above that stickle. Ah, I've got him now. You might swear he was a black stone. So? Twisden's the name, isn't it? No. Uh, I mean to say, yes. It's a wise conspirator that knows his own name. Call it disgraceful. Disgraceful that an able-bodied man like you should dare to beg. You can get a meal from my kitchen, but you'll get no money from me. Evening, Sir Walter. That's my house. Wait five minutes and then go round to the back door. Way, sir. Sir Walter thought as how uh, Mr. Reggie's things would fit you, sir. He keeps some clothes here for he comes regular on the weekends. There's a bathroom next door and I'll prepare hot bath. Dinner in half an hour, sir. You'll hear the gong. I'm more obliged to you than I can say, but I'm bound to make things clear. I'm an innocent man, but I'm wanted by the police. I've got to tell you this, and I won't be surprised if you kick me out. That's all right. Don't let that interfere with your appetite. We can talk about these things after dinner.
I've obeyed Harry's instructions, and the bribe he offered me was, was that you would tell me something to wake me up. I'm ready, Mr. Harry. You may dismiss the police from your mind. You're in no danger from the law of this land. Great Scott. Have they got the murderer? No. But for the last fortnight, they've dropped you from the list of possibles. Why? Principally because I received a letter from Scudder. I knew something of the man, and he did several jobs for me. He was half crank, half genius, but he was wholly honest. Trouble about him was his partiality for playing a lone hand. That made him pretty well useless in any secret service. A pity, for he had uncommon gifts. I think he was the bravest man in the world, for he was always shivering with fright, and yet nothing would choke him off. I had a letter from him on the 31st of May. But he had been dead a week by then. The letter was written and posted on the 23rd, he evidently did not anticipate an immediate decease. His communications usually took a week to reach me, for they were sent undercover to Spain and then to Newcastle. He had a mania, you know, for concealing his tracks. I think his object was to clear you if anything happened. But when I got it, I went to Scotland Yard, went over the details of the inquest and concluded that you were the friend. We made inquiries about you, Mr. Hannay, and found you were respectable. I thought I knew the motives for your disappearance, not only the police, the other one too. And when I got Harry's scrawl, I guessed at the rest. I've been expecting you any time this past week. Thank heavens. Now, let us have the little notebook. I don't know what to make of it. He's right about one thing. What is going to happen the day after tomorrow? How the devil can it have got known? That is ugly enough in itself. But all this about war and the Black Stone, it reads like some wild melodrama. If only I had more confidence in Scudder's judgment. Trouble about him was that he was too romantic. He had the... 
artistic temperament and wanted a story to be better than God meant it to be. He had a lot of odd biases, too. Jews, for example, made him see red. Jews and the high finance. The black stone. The Schwarze Stein. Yeah, it's like a penny novelette. And all this stuff about Karolides. That is the weak part of the tale, for I happen to know that the virtuous Karolides is likely to outlast us both. There's no state in Europe that wants him gone. Besides, he's just been playing up to Berlin and Vienna and giving my chief some uneasy moments. Now, Scudder's gone off the track there. Frankly, Hannay, I don't believe that part of his story. There's some nasty business afoot, and he found out too much and lost his life over it. But I'm ready to take my oath that it's ordinary spy work. A certain great European power makes a hobby of her spy system, and her methods are not too particular. Since she pays by piecework, her blackguards are not likely to stick at a murder or two. They want our naval dispositions for their collection at the Malinampt. But they'll be pigeonholed. Nothing more. There's a trunk call from London, Sir Walter. It's Mr. Reith, and he wants to speak to you personally. I apologise to the shade of Scudder. Carolides was shot dead this evening at a few minutes after seven. Busy hour on the telephone after you went to bed. I got my chief to speak to the First Lord and the Secretary for War, and they're bringing Roy over a day sooner. Now, this wire clinches it. He'll be in London at five. Odd that the code word for a sous chef d'etat major general should be porker. <laughs> Uh, not that I think it'll do much good. If your friends were clever enough to find out the first arrangement, they're clever enough to discover the change. I would give my head to know where the leak is. We believed there were only five men in England who knew about Royer's visit, and you may be certain there were fewer in France, for they managed these things better there. That is the best we can do, and it's hard to see how there can be any miscarriage. But I don't mind admitting that I'm horribly nervous. This murder of Carolides will play the deuce in the chancelleries of Europe.
Hanny, can you drive a car? Why, yes. Well, you'll be my chauffeur today and wear Hudson's rig. You're about his size. You have a hand in this business and we're taking no risks. There are desperate men against us who will not respect the country retreat of an overworked official. McGillivray, I've brought you the Portland Place murderer. Hmm, it would have been a welcome present, Boulevant. This, I presume, is Mr. Richard Hannay, who for some days greatly interested my department. Mr. Hannay will interest it again. He has much to tell you, but not today. For certain grave reasons, his tale must wait for four hours. Then, I can promise you, you will be entertained and possibly edified. I want you to assure Mr. Hannay that he will suffer no further inconvenience. You can take up your life where you left off. Your flat, which probably you no longer wish to occupy, is waiting for you. And your man is still there. As you were never publicly accused, we considered that there was no need of a public exculpation. But on that, of course, you must please yourself. McGillivray, we may want your assistance later on. Come and see me tomorrow, Hanny. I needn't tell you to keep deadly quiet. If I were you, I would go to bed, for you must have considerable arrears of sleep to overtake. You'd better lie low, for if one of your Blackstone friends saw you, there might be trouble. Of course.
My God, the murderer! Here, you, you fellows, hold him! That's Hannay, the man who did the Portland Place murder! What's going on here? Oh, this man is the Portland Place murderer! Oh. Damn it all! Make your fellows shut up! Uh, I advise you to leave me alone, Constable. Scotland Yard knows all about me, and you'll get a proper wigging if you interfere. You've got to come along with me, young man. I saw you strike that gentleman cruel hard. You began it too, for he wasn't doing nothing. I've seen you. You best go quietly, or I'll have to fix you up. What? Oh, watch him! Watch him! Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. See Sir Walter. My business is desperately important. Sir Walter is engaged, sir, and I have orders to admit no one. Perhaps you will wait. See here. There's trouble about, and I'm in it. But Sir Walter knows, and I'm working for him. If anyone comes and asks if I'm here, tell him a lie. This is the house of Sir Walter Bullivant, and I am under the strictest orders not to let anyone, no matter who, interrupt his office.
Ellsworth's residence. How may I help you? Is his lordship at home? His lordship returned half an hour ago and has gone to bed. He's not very well tonight. Will you leave him a message, sir? I knew it. And I feel reassured. Sir Walter! Gentlemen! This is Mr. Hannay, of whom I have spoken to you. I'm afraid, Hannay, this visit is ill-timed. <laughs> that remains to be seen, sir. But I think it may be in the nick of time. For God's sake, gentlemen, tell me who went out a minute ago. Lord Alloa. It was not. <laughs> it was his living image, but it was not Lord Alloa. It was someone who recognized me, someone I have seen in the last month. He had scarcely left the doorstep when I rang up Lord Alloa's house and was told he had come in half an hour before and had gone to bed. Uh, uh, who? who? The Black Stone. Nonsense! I have spoken to Aloha. Had him out of bed, very grumpy. He went straight home after Malross's dinner. But it's madness. Do you mean to tell me that that man came here and sat beside me for the best part of half an hour and that I didn't detect the imposture? Aloha must be out of his mind. Don't you see the cleverness of it? You were too interested in other things to have any eyes. You took Lord Alloa for granted. If it had been anybody else, you might have looked more closely, but it was natural for him to be here, and that put you all to sleep. The young man is right. His psychology is good. Our enemies have not been foolish. I will tell you a tale. It happened many years ago in Senegal.
What happened? I stuffed my fishing rod into his jaws, and I had a pistol. Also, my servants came presently with rifles. But he left his mark on me. Consider. The mayor had been dead more than an hour, and the brute had been patiently watching me ever since. I never saw the kill, for I was accustomed to the mayor's fretting. And I never marked her absence, for my consciousness of her was only of something uh, tawny, and the lion filled that part. If I could blunder thus, gentlemen, in a land where men's senses are keen, why should we busy, preoccupied, urban folk not err also? Well... I suppose there is nothing for it but to change the plans. Did you tell Lord Alloa what has happened? No? Well, I can't speak with absolute assurance, but I'm nearly certain we can't make any serious change, unless we alter the geography of England. God! And we have not a rag of a clue. Besides, there is the post. By this time, the news will be on its way. No. You do not understand the habits of the spy. He receives personally his reward, and he delivers personally his intelligence. We in France know something of the breed. Now, oh, there is still a chance, mes amis. These men must cross the sea, and there are ships to be searched, and ports to be watched. Believe me, the need is desperate for both France and Britain. Where is Scudder's book? Quick, man! I remember something in it. What is it? Can it Thirty-nine steps. Thirty-nine steps. I counted them. High tide, 10.17 p.m. What yeah, relevance is all... Don't I you don't see? Know. It's a clue. Scudder knew where these fellows laid. He knew where they were going to leave the country, though he kept the name to himself. Tomorrow was the day, and it was some place where high tide was at 10.17. But they may have gone tonight. Not they. They have their own snug secret way, and they won't be hurried. I know Germans, and they're mad about working to a plan. Where the devil can I get a book of tie tables? It's a chance. Let's go over to the Admiralty.
Here's the most I can make of it. We have got to find a place where there are several staircases down to the beach, one of which has 39 steps. Mm. I think it's a piece of open coast with biggish cliffs somewhere between the wash and the channel. Also, it's a place where full tide is at 10.17 tomorrow night. Is there no inspector of coast guards or some fellow like that that knows the East Coast? Why, yes, there is. He lives in Clapham. Let me get him now. This is the chap. Good evening, gentlemen. We want you to tell us the places you know on the East Coast where there are cliffs and where several sets of steps run down to the beach. What kind of steps do you mean, sir? There are plenty of places with roads cut down through the cliffs and most roads have a step or two in them. Or do you mean regular staircases, all steps, so to speak? We mean regular staircases. I don't know that I can think of any. Wait a second. There's a place in Norfolk, Brattlesham, beside a golf course, where there are a couple of staircases to let the gentleman get a lost ball. That's not it. Then there are plenty of marine parades, if that's what you mean. Every seaside resort has them. It's got to be more retired than that. Well, gentlemen, I can't think of anywhere else. Of course, there's the rough. What's that? The big chalk headland in Kent, close to Bradgate. It's got a lot of villas on the top. And some of the houses have staircases down to a private beach. It's a very high-toned sort of place. And the residents there like to keep by themselves. We're on the scent at last. How can I find out what is the tide at the rough? I can tell you that, sir. I once was lit a house there in this very month, and I used to go out at night to the deep sea fishing. The tide's ten minutes before Bradgate. If one of those staircases has 39 steps, we have solved the mystery, gentlemen. I want the loan of your car, Sir Walter, and a map of the roads. Of course. If Mr. McGillivray will spare me ten minutes, yes. I think we can prepare something for tomorrow. Good, I good, good, good. I, for one, am content to leave the matter in Mr. Rene's hands.
34, 35, 42, 47, and 21. With a click, let's get lower. And 39. Okay, we have them.
You all right there, Percy? Yes, you're looking a little hot under the collar. I've got into a proper lather. This'll bring down my weight and my handicap, Bob. I'll take you on tomorrow and give you a stroke a hole. <laughs> 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 Is, uh, Mr. Appleton at home? Yes, sir. Please, come in. Who may I say is calling? Richard Hanney. If you could wait in the smoking room, I'll let Mr. Appleton know you're here. <laughs> Mr. Hannay? Did you wish to see me? I think we have met before, and I guess you know my business. Maybe. Maybe. I haven't a very good memory, but 
I'm afraid you must tell me your errand, sir, for I really don't know it. Well then, I have come to tell you that the game's up. I have a warrant for the arrest of you three gentlemen. Uh, arrest? Arrest? Good God, what for? For the murder of Franklin Scudder in London on the 23rd day of last month. I never heard the name before. And that was the Portland Place murder. I read about it. Good heavens. You must be mad, sir. Where do you come from? Scotland Yard. Don't get flustered, Uncle. It's all a ridiculous mistake. But these things happen sometimes, and we can easily set it right. It won't be hard to prove our innocence. I can show you that I was out the country on the 23rd of May, and Bob was in a nursing home. Mm. You were in London, but you can explain what you were doing. Right, Percy. Of course, that's easy enough. The 23rd. That was the day after Agatha's wedding. Let me see, what was I doing? Came... Up in the morning from Woking and lunched at the club with Charlie Simons. Then, oh yes, I dined with the fishmongers. I remember for the punch didn't agree with me and I was seedy next morning. Mm. Hang it all, there's the cigar box I brought back from the dinner. <laughs> I think, sir, you will see you are mistaken. We want to assist the law, like all Englishmen, and we don't want Scotland Yard to be making fools of themselves. That's so, Uncle? Certainly, Bob. Certainly. We'll do anything in our power to assist the authorities, but this is a bit too much. I can't get over it. <laughs> How Nelly will chuckle. She always said you would die of boredom because nothing ever happened to you. <laughs> now you've got it thick and strong. <laughs> By Joe, yes, just think of it. What a story to tell at the club. Really, Mr. Hanley, I suppose I should be angry to show my innocence, but it's too funny. I almost forgive you the fright you gave me. You looked so glum. I thought I might have been walking in my sleep and killing people. Well, are you reassured by your scrutiny, sir? I hope you find it consistent with your duty to drop this ridiculous business. I make no complaint, but you see how annoying it must be to respectable people. Oh, Lord. This is a bit too thick. Do you propose to march us off to the police station? That might be the best way out of it, but I suppose you won't be content with the local branch. I have the right to ask to see your warrant, but I don't wish to cast any aspersions upon you. You're only doing your duty. But you'll admit, it's horribly awkward. What do you propose to do? Meantime, I vote we have a game of bridge. It'll give Mr. Hanny time to think over things. And you know we've been wanting a fourth player. Do you play, sir?
Yes. Yes, I play. Bob, look at the time. You better think about catching your train. Bob's got to go to town tonight. I'm afraid he must put off his journey. Oh, damn. I thought you'd drop that rot. I simply got to go. You can have my address, and I'll give you any security you like. No. You must stay. I'll go bail for my nephew. That ought to content you, Mr. Hanny. In time, he's gone. He has triumphed. Der Schwarze Stein is in der Siegeskrone.
I hope Franz will bear his triumph well. I ought to tell you that the Ariadne for the last hour has been in our hands. Three weeks later, as all the world knows, we went to war. 
I joined the new army the first week and, owing to my Matta Bailey experience, got a captain's commission straight off. But I had done my best service, I think, before I put on khaki.